Welcome you to the belly of the news beast. Kevin McCullough, glad to be back with you on AFA Today here on AFR Talk. It was a, a very unusual day yesterday and very uh, very much appreciate Fred Jackson jumping in for me into the anchor chair of AFA Today uh, from uh, the Tupelo headquarters of the American Family Radio Network. Always uh, good to hear Fred's take. And, and on tax day, what, an, what a great question he asked you yesterday. If you could uh, reform the tax code, how would you do it? What would you, <laughs> what would you change? That's a good thing he didn't get me on as a caller. I would have taken up the rest of the hour. <laughs> anyway, welcome to uh, welcome to the new edition. We're glad you're with us. Kevin McCullough is my name. My phone number is 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. There is a lot of news going on today. Uh, the tensions continue to get very, very hot in the Ukraine. Uh, you've got uh, uh, tanks that are flying Russian flags. You've got troops saying they're defecting. You've got all kinds of just all-out anarchy in, uh, in, in what was previously a fairly free country. But what we are seeing is the old, the old Soviet arm coming back to, uh, to power. And uh, this, is, uh, this is how uh, Putin learned in the KGB, and he's just executing it all over again, uh, trying to assimilate. The Ukraine is very resource-rich. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of strategic reasons why he would want that uh, control of that region. But uh, my heart is breaking a little bit for the free people of Ukraine, and I hope, I hope, I hope uh, that they do not lose their freedom. We will see. We will see what, uh, what happens. Um, you know, it was interesting. Yesterday, uh, there were a lot of solemn observances in the country. There was, uh, of course, the memorial at, uh, in, in Boston observing the uh, one-year anniversary since the uh, explosion that killed four people and, well, three people, and then, and then later a, a, a police officer who was shooting in the uh, aftermath. Um, and it was uh, on that same day that uh, the president here in the midst of Holy Week, uh, uh, you know, Passover began on Monday, and of course uh, the Christian holidays are this uh, this coming uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and there's this um, you know real sense of I don't know reflection and and observance that's kind of being uh, felt. And yesterday morning, it was uh, yesterday morning that the president met with uh, a bunch of folks uh, from what he called a a faith gathering, uh, a gathering of faith leaders. It was actually only about five people, and uh, two of them were uh, activist groups that that were, I guess, loosely faith-affiliated, but then the other people that were in the room were the Southern Baptists, the Wesleyans, and the Mormons. And the question that they that they put before uh, the, the leaders is, uh, how, can we, how can we work on um, uh, immigration reform? And there was nothing really specific— uh, proposed or asked to be signed off on or anything like that. It was really much more of a uh, pro forma kind of, this is how you do it, uh, get in front of the president, kind of show kind of, you know, more of a circus than an actual important meeting. But they did that and they put the, the, the information out there so that people like you and I would would think, oh, people of faith are backing the president's plan for uh, for immigration reform, and and of course, if you if you back immigration reform, what that's supposed to mean is you're in favor of illegal immigration. Uh, you're in favor of lots of illegal immigration, and immigration is one of those really weird things that I think that is got tons of nuance to it that very few people even discuss in a nuanced way. For instance, my my really pro constitutional friends of which I'd like to think I'm one, but I don't necessarily go this far, believe that you should deport all of the illegals that are in the country. I I don't know that that's even possible. I I don't. I just don't. Um, But but then the uh, people that are pro, uh, you know, uh, immigration reform, uh, kind of without fail, are against strengthening the borders. And so it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to be on either end of this that you ever get like, I don't know, an honest conversation about all the nuances that are involved and how you deal with them effectively. From the beginning, people that have written me and asked me about it, I've always said we've got to enforce border security. We have to enforce enforce border security for primarily this reason. We have captured since 9-11 more than 2,700 uh, south of the border uh, people coming across that are not of Latin American origin that that are in fact from Middle Eastern origin, so from Egypt and from Saudi Arabia and from Yemen and from Afghanistan and Pakistan and Iraq and Iran, we've we've caught people from all of that region of the world, 
trying to penetrate our southern border. Now, why is that? And why 2000? And what, what, what's going on there? Why can't they just buy a plane ticket and come to see us like everybody else does? See, that's, that's where I think you start having to ask really hard questions. And so if you talk to Border Patrol people, they will say uh, Border Patrol is Border Security is of absolute importance because you have these people that aren't just coming here for jobs and they're not just here trying to send money back to their family back home and all the rest of it. Then you've got the types that if you just say anything about any type of immigration enforcement, you're an automatic xenophobe. So in this really polarized you know, opposite end of the spectrum environment, you can't get any honest conversation about immigration to be had. So what does the president do? He invites Russell Moore of the Southern Baptists, the head of the Wesleyan group, and um, and uh, one of the LDS, uh, the Mormons, uh, asked one of them in. And then there's two activists, uh, Hispanic activist groups that were there, but they called it a, a meeting of faith leaders. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, and, and I don't know, I just thought it was more of a show than anything else. But then, um, yesterday Fox News wanted to talk about it on a panel. Gretchen Carlson asked, uh, some, some folks to come on over and I was one of those that came over and she actually said, you know, that's one thing that we could talk about, but then her, her, her th- thought and where she went with it went in a very different direction. Just, just take a listen to uh, how it went down. President Obama met with faith leaders. It happened earlier today, part of his push for immigration reform. So what do religious leaders have to say about immigration issues? And will appealing from the pulpit help or hurt that cause? Time to bring in our faith panel, Dr. Wendy Patrick, ordained Baptist minister and attorney, Father Gerald Murray making another appearance from the Church of the Holy Family, and Kevin McCullough, radio host. Great to see all three of you on this Holy Week. Thanks for being here. Thank Thank you. you. All right, so we have this political meeting, doctor, and we have the meeting of policy with faith talking about immigration. Is this a good or bad idea? Well, it's, it's always a wonderful idea to be talking to people of faith. I love that. But the topic, right? Are, are we talking about faith or are we sort of using faith as a guise to talk politics? And that, I think, is what really sort of divides some of the people that are watching this. That, you know, it would be nice if we were talking about how to bring Americans back to church instead of talking about policy issues. So well, we're going to get to that in just a minute. Yeah. So, so. And I agree with, I agree with uh, Pastor uh, Davis on that or... or uh, that's not her last name. Patrick. Mm. Wendy Davis. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I met Dr. Patrick yesterday for the first time. She was very, very lovely. I, I did not mean to uh, uh, confuse her with the pro-abortion uh, legislator in Texas. Um, but, yeah, I thought she was I thought she was right on. It, it, this is a cloak and dagger thing. They're, they're meeting behind closed doors, lots of smoke and mirrors, but no, nothing of substance. And really is the purpose to talk faith or was it to get some sort of faith rubber stamp for the president's proposed immigration plans, but I don't even know if we know the details of. Um, So I I do think that that was largely an interesting but large waste of time for the president. But then she asked the uh, Catholic priest that was on the panel uh, this following question. I also found this equally fascinating. Father, I grew up in a, in a religious family. My grandfather was a minister. Um, he was a incredible liberal, and I never knew it from the pulpit because he chose to never preach politics. I prefer that. How do you feel about this? No, I agree. Uh, the priest or the minister should not take advantage of the congregation to impose his political views. He, there's a lot to talk about with Christian doctrine. That's our mission. Now, sometimes the doctrine will affect how you live in, in the world in the political sense, so you will touch on issues. But those have to be issues that are, you know, basically very serious, abortion, same-sex marriage, mm-hmm. uh, debates about how you would control in immigration. Those are best left to the politicians. We can tell them about just criteria. Okay. okay. And I'm not sure that I do agree with him completely on all of that because the, it seemed like what uh, Father Murray's uh, argument there was is that uh, pastors need to uh, only talk uh, about doctrine. And... Here's here's and I'm not saying that I want our pulpits to become politicized, but the 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 message to largely Christian congregations in recent years has. Yeah, don't talk about anything that touches the real world. If you do, we'll take away your 501c3 status or if you do, we'll do something mean to you because you're not you're not playing right. uh, And so we're going to we're going to levy this threat over your head 
uh, and we don't want you, you know, stepping into the middle of public policy. And I, I didn't have a chance to say this uh, to uh, Father Murray yesterday, but I, I would if I had a chance to be with him longer uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a setting that went a little bit further, because what I would say to him is, look, uh, it is perfectly within every pastor's both biblical right and American right, and I recognize that those are two different things, but it's within the right of the pastor from the Bible's perspective to speak truth about any and all subjects that you come to. So if the Bible has something pertinent to say about immigration, you should say it. And if it has something pertinent to say about uh, uh, sexual behavior, sexual integrity, you should say it. And if it has something to say about protecting the innocent, then you should say it. I don't think there should be this arbitrary, well, because that might be perceived as political, we should never talk about it kind of mentality. And I, th- I don't know that that's what Father Murray was advancing, but it sure sounded like it. Um, it, it was interesting because in some of the other discussion we had with him off air, I thought, man, this, this guy's quite conservative. I really like uh, where he's coming from. In fact, we agreed on a couple of things about uh, Christianity and some of the issues that are facing it when we were off the air. Uh, but then Gretchen turned to me and, and unloaded on me a question that I want to ask of you once you hear what she asked. Uh, and this was it. Kevin, I want to get this in because we have situations happening in Boston today with the one-year anniversary as well. But one of the things we wanted to talk about today was how do we get people back to faith in this country? It's a huge challenge. There was a study done that was the results came out last week. Sixty-four percent of those that identify as um, non-committed mm-hmm. fall in the uh, fall in the 18 to 29-year-old group. The millennial group has rejected the Bible in such a strong way. They said it's not important to them anymore. Anything that's in there is not important to them anymore. When you have that level of the population that is saying, I don't even need a relationship to this element that has been a core piece of most of the American family, uh, you have a huge challenge. And I don't, uh, politics aside, I think that you've got to be much more strategic about the personal need of the yeah. individual. Yeah, and that's what I want to ask you. I want to ask you what Gretchen asked me. Uh, 888-589-8840, 888 What must be done to get the American public back to church? I want to know what you think about that. What has to be done for the American uh, public to be brought back to church? Why is it that uh, there is such a, uh, an out-and-out rejection of faith in such a strong way? Uh, and and if, if we are missing it, what do you perceive needs to be done on the, on the behalf of Christians, on the behalf of, of those that are church? What is necessary to bring them back uh, to some sort of observance of faith in their life? Um, is it even possible? Do you think it is even possible? And if we can't talk about it during Holy Week, when can we talk about it? 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. There are a lot of people that argue and say that uh, the church has messed itself up by taking a stand on some of these public policy issues. A lot of other people say the church has become become inept because it won't stand strong enough. Uh, Do you think that that has anything to do with why people have or have not rejected uh, a modern faith experience. Uh, 888-589-8840. What is your perspective about how to get people back to the church? It is a huge problem. I don't think that any of us uh, deny that. But what should be done from where you sit, from the community that you live in, from some of the things that you may even be attempting? I want to know your thoughts on that. 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. I'm Kevin McCullough. This is AFA Today on AFR Talk. Stay with us.